Ah, excellent. Okay, good. Thank you. I was having some issue earlier. I guess the sound was coming back into the headset and it was causing like a really nasty reverb. I didn't know if anyone else could hear it, um, but it was uh, really terrible for me. Uh, so uh, thanks to folks for showing up or for folks who might be watching this uh, later. Awesome. Thank you, Kat. Uh, thanks for confirming. Uh, so I'm just going to do today a quick step through of a couple, a little bit of explanation of the kanji kente, um, talk a little bit about my uh, study for it, uh, as well as then do a, a live 3DS playthrough of one of the official kanji kente practice games, um, which I've been uh, working on for a while now. Uh, it might go well, it might be a disaster, we'll see, but hopefully everyone learns um, hopefully a little bit of something about the kanji kente, uh, and hopefully a few people walk away thinking that it's uh, something that can be valuable uh, for you in your own Japanese studies. So let me do a quick presentation first. One second, I need to get my uh, presentation running again and share screen. I mean to pick up these games, but the menus are way too confusing. Yeah, I, I do think it takes a little bit of um, kind of Japanese ability to be able um, to tackle it. So I'll talk a little bit about that as I'm going through the game as well. Um, so first, uh, also just to let you guys know, I can't really see questions right now, uh, but after I'm done with the presentation, I'll pop back and answer any questions that anybody might have typed in uh, to the screen. Uh, so uh, Kanji Kente, what is it? And how does it differ from other tests? Uh, sorry about that. Um, so the full name of this thing is the uh, Nihon Kanji Norioku Kente, um, but you can also call it the Kanken uh, for short. Uh, it is run by a, a nonprofit foundation out of Japan. And I keep doing that. Uh, and uh, it is meant to uh, basically to test kanji ability and by that i mean uh, kanji writing i'm um, reading and comprehension and comprehension is composed of uh, several different things and what's tested uh, can depend on the level that you're taking uh, so uh, it generally will, you'll be tested on you know radicals bushu of kanji um, special readings like ateji um, four character compounds things like anonyms and synonyms as well as kanji construction i'll get into a little bit but what that means later. Um, so it's a little more than just a kanji test. It's more like a general kind of Japanese vocabulary uh, test as well. And as such can be really helpful in building up both of your kanji ability as well as your vocabulary ability. Just keep doing the wrong transition there. Um, it's this, this is a test primarily posted at native uh, primarily aimed at native speakers. So this is one marked difference with the Japanese language proficiency test, um, which is primary, which is intended uh, to test the Japanese uh, ability of non-native Japanese as a second language um, speakers. Uh, this is not a second language test. That doesn't mean that people who speak Japanese as a second language can't take it. Uh, many uh, non-Japanese and Japanese as a second language students have uh, taken it. It's just not the intended target audience. Uh, that's also why you're not really going to find like a lot of Kanken prep uh, in other languages besides uh, Japanese. Um, so there is kind of a barrier to entry in there, uh, as Kat kind of noted with the game as well, is that it takes knowing a little bit of Japanese uh, to kind of like even get up to that level. I'm just going to check in, just checking on, on uh, the window, making sure things are looking OK. So let's go on to the next point here. Oh, why did it do that? Not what I wanted. Uh, so you can take the test both in Japan as well as outside of Japan. If you go to the Kanji Kente website, uh, then they have a list of test centers both in the country as well as uh, overseas as well. Something that I found out is that not all the test opportunities are actually listed there. Uh, there are uh, places like, you know, uh, schools meant for Japanese children in other countries like the U.S. where uh, the test will be given periodically as well. If you're kind of tuned into um, the local um, Japanese immigrant expat community in your area or there you're in an area large enough like Seattle, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles that has uh, a Japanese language newspaper, uh, you might find some advertisements for it there. Um, so something to uh, keep in mind, when I first looked at uh, the test, I, I mostly based out of Seattle, uh, and I had thought I'd have to go to either Los Angeles or Vancouver, uh, Canada, in order to take the test. And 
turned out that a uh, local Japanese K to eight school was is actually offering the test in February. So that's where I'm taking it. So I want to talk really quickly about the ConCan test levels here. Uh, I'm not going to go into every level um, because there's 12 of them. Uh, there's levels 10 through 1, and then there's a pre-2 and a pre-1 level as well. But I just wanted to kind of give you some scope of what different levels are available and what kind of different challenges uh, you can give yourself uh, with the Kanji Kente. It's actually really flexible. Um, so first is uh, level 10, uh, so uh, Juku. Uh, this is really simple. Uh, each of these Kanji Kente levels is aimed, uh, it targets a like, specific um, grade level. Uh, like if you pass like this level, then you know, you're like middle school level or some such. Um, 10 is, you're being tested on 80 Kanji, uh, it's basically like first grade level knowledge of kanji. You're not being tested on a lot else. Um, there's not tests on things like um, radicals, bushu. Um, there's not tests on a lot of the other things that the kan can test, uh, which I'll go into a little bit later. Um, so it's a fairly like easy entry. Uh, and it's a very high pass rate, 94.8% of the people who took it in 2018 passed it. Uh, so for this, uh, these stats, by the way, I'm getting these from the 2018 stats off of the official ConCan website, and I'm averaging the three test periods that occurred in 2018 to get the percentages. So jump through all the levels. So as you go up the levels, um, they start to add different things that they test in. So for example, uh, in level 10, uh, radicals, Bushu, aren't tested for your knowledge of radicals of kanji. Um, once you get to, I think it's eight, seven or, or something, um, they throw those in. At some point, I think it's level five, level six, seven, six, they start to throw in things like uh, Ateji, uh, so kind of like, non-standard readings of kanji. Uh, once you get to level five, they start to throw in uh, yoji jukugo, four character compounds. Uh, so other elements come into the test gradually uh, as you kind of increase your level. Uh, level three, uh, so sankyu, uh, you're, this is kind of like a pivotal level. It's the level that most people who take the kanken actually take. It has the highest, uh, the highest um, exam taker rate. I think it's 150,000 took it last year. Um, it tests you on 1,600 kanji. So not um, not the Joyo kanji, complete Joyo kanji, but getting close to it. Um, so this is like middle school graduate knowledge. If you, this is aimed at, you know, this is kind of like the kanji slash Japanese level you should have graduating um, from middle school. And it has a decent pass rate, uh, 45%, which honestly, uh, I just looked at the JLPT 2018 July pass rates, and I think that's um, better than most of the pass rates for most of the levels uh, of the JLPT. Um, this is a really good level, I think, because it, a lot of like the common uh, everyday kanji that you would need, it's included in this level, you're expected to know it. Uh, I think you'll pick up a lot of like great vocabulary, Yoji Jukugo, and other things by studying that level. Um, so then we get to level pre-2, um, Juniku. Um, so this is one of those pre-levels I was talking about. And this is where it starts to get a little bit harder, uh, 1,940 kanji. So again, not quite, uh, not quite up to the full um, Joyo kanji at this point, but almost there, uh, just shy of it. This is high school level knowledge of uh, Japanese. And they're also testing you on like all the all the other areas of the content you get tested on. So not just uh, kanji writing and kanji reading, and you're also including like radicals, um, synonyms and antonyms, uh, ateji, uh, yoji jukugo, four character compounds, uh, okurigana, so you tested, do you know like the right um, uh, kana that comes after a given word, uh, and uh, things like uh, testing you for like, mistake. can you identify when a mistaken character is used in uh, text. Um, so the pretty rigorous level and is shown by the pass rate, which is a 31.9% pass rate, uh, which I think is even worse than uh, level N1 of the JLPT uh, for this uh, past July. If you really want to challenge yourself, um, you've got the three more levels after that. And you've got level two, uh, Niku. Now here you're at the full Joyo Kanji. This is high school graduate college level knowledge of uh, Japanese. 
and it reflects that in the pass rate. It is a 21.1% uh, pass rate, uh, getting really low. Gets even lower when you go up to level pre-1, Juniku. Here you're up to 3,000 kanji. Uh, this is what you might expect somebody in a college or the general population to be able to know. Again, with a lot of stuff specific to the Konken, so with some study. Um, and again, pass rate is falling, falling, falling. It's the 11.9% pass rate. And interestingly, for this past year, that was kind of high. There were three testing sessions recorded on the Konken website for last year. One of them, 21% of the people who took um, pre one passed it, but in the other two, um, six percent and seven percent respectively passed it. So that one group really brought the average up. Um, but it's traditionally a very low pass rate for this level. Not as low though as um level one, which is around six thousand kanji. Uh, it's like a kanji grandmaster level. I completely made that term up. It doesn't actually exist. And uh, with an eight point one percent pass rate. Um, I've heard of a couple of uh, non-native speakers actually attaining this level. I think it probably takes a ridiculous amount of study. I don't know personally if this is something that I would ever go for, um, but if uh, you really love testing and you really want to prove something and you want your to show your Jap knowledge of Japanese is damn near encyclopedic, um, then this would be the uh, one to go for. Uh, so 94.8% pass rate, says Kat. Wonder who's feeling that, especially considering this is named at na Native Japanese people. Well, you know, kids. Kids are feeling <laughs> six, seven years old. And, you know, what you're going to do? Um, at, at that point, a, a lot of, like I said, you know, this is a test for Native speakers, but they're taking it, a lot of uh, them are taking it at, like, grade level. Um, yeah, kids would be taking these tests too. Um, so like the level three, you see like a lot of middle schoolers um, taking that test to show their Japanese ability as well. So you're going to have some um, not passes in there, unfortunately. Bummer for the kids. So what are the benefits of Konkin? So I want to talk about this because I've seen some stuff out there. Um, there's an article, for example, on the Tofuku website um, that talks about the kanji kente. And it's pretty dismissive of the exam for uh, second language learners. And I really don't share that opinion. Uh, I think it's, I won't say it's misguided. I just think um, there is benefit in studying the kanji kente um, if it's something that you're motivated to do. There's other ways to improve your Japanese, obviously, um, but uh, I like the kanji kente uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, you get muscle memory for kanji knowledge. This is kind of like a big topic recently, uh, even in Japan, uh, because a lot of people are native speakers are losing their ability to write a certain, you know, certain kanji or huge swaths of kanji um, because few people are writing anymore. Uh, Everyone's using smartphones, they're using personal computers to input, and so that uh, knowledge is starting to deteriorate a little bit. So a lot of people will argue, well, you know, if Japanese people don't care about writing kanji, why should I? And I think for a, a non-native speaker of the language, one of the best benefits is that you learn much better writing things down. Uh, this is proven in you know, kind of multiple scientific studies that writing is really a great aid with memory. Um, I'm at the point with some kanji where I just kind of whip them out and I'm not even like really thinking about it anymore. It's just kind of become automatic. Uh, so I think that really helps you, particularly in your early stages, to kind of like get the kanji down and make them kind of make them your own and keep them stuck in your memory. Uh, so another benefit uh, I I think there is in this is you can drill on the various meanings and pronunciations of kanji. So, I, I mean, everyone knows that kanji have onin kun readings. They, uh, they have multiple readings per kanji, particularly when you bring names in, they have even more readings. Um, most kanji also have multiple meanings um, in different contexts, sometimes related meanings, but sometimes you know, different meanings. Um, this came up with the naming of the new era, Dewa, when a lot of people were like, oh, Dewa, it means control. You know, it's in the Mayday order. It means bossing people around. It, it also means, you know, good. It, that's the meaning that it uh, came from the Manyoshu. You know, so kanji are not Kanji are complex. Um, they've got a, a lot of meaning and nuance can be pa uh, packed into them. And when you're drilling in the Konken, um, you're kind of really digging into 
the kanji and understanding those various meanings and readings. Um, this is something I hear from a lot of people who do HiSig is that a lot of people come on and ask, well, I've done HiSig, now how do I actually get the readings down? How do I uh, how do I make this knowledge of the kanji that I've learned a little more concrete? I actually think Konken is a really good way to do that. Um, rounded vocabulary. Uh, so you're definitely going to um, study some things in Konken that um, you might not know. I think I actually came across a Yoji Jukugo recently that even my wife was like, what the hell is that? I've never even heard of that. Um, but most of the vocabulary actually isn't like that. Most of it is stuff that I end up seeing in the wild. Um, and even in the cases where I'm studying words that I might not directly use or I might not directly see elsewhere, uh, I still think it's good to study them because it helps you kind of keep the kanji in memory. It gives you more word associations with that specific kanji uh, and helps it be a little more sticky, helps you recall it a lot more easier. And another thing is that, oddly enough, studying writing can improve your listening. Um, this is something somebody, Austin, who is helping me get started with Konkin study remarked on that he said, you know, after um, studying for level two, I found it was really improving my listening. And I thought that was weird when he said it. Um, but after studying uh, Kanji Kente for a while, I actually see where he's coming from uh, with that. Uh, the more you kind of study and the more you know kanji in depth, uh, there's been some cases where I've like been listening to a TV program and I'll hear a word and I don't necessarily know um, what the word is, but I can tell it's a niji jukuko. It's a two character kanji compound and I can think, oh, based on the pronunciation and the context and on you know, like a kind of the rules I know for how um, two character words are constructed. I could guess it's these kanji, and I know the meaning of those kanji, so now I know the meaning of the word. Um, that I've seen that happening in my own mind several times, and it's really cool. Um, so I, I think there's, in the end, a lot of benefit um, for studying the kanji kente. Again, if it's um, something that you're really motivated to do. Uh, that was the end of uh, my short PowerPoint there. So unless anyone has any questions, I was uh, going to dig into what might be the more disastrous portion uh, of uh, this presentation, which I was going to do a walkthrough of the actual application. So let me share my screen. And this won't take up my full screen, so I can also see questions if anyone has them. And uh, Kat's comment on things I had no idea about how Konken worked. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad this could be of a little assistance. Uh, so I'm going to uh, hopefully be able to dig in even a little bit more right now uh, into Konken and show you uh, through studying the app some of the things that you would actually study. Um, so this might get a little bit boring because I'm going to go through each of the study areas uh, and I'm going to actually challenge myself um, to go through a full study session here. Um, so at some point you might like kind of get the idea or you might want to just tune out. I'll pipe in and say when I'm kind of going into another section if you kind of want to return focus at that point. Um, let me start the app. I'm By the way, I'm really, oops. Hold on a second. Uh, my DS just completely crashed out of me there. <laughs> okay, so naturally the minute I press stop recording, it started working again. I mean, I've been in software for a while. I know this is basically how it goes, but Jesus. All right, um, so let's try this again. I don't know. I don't know if anybody's going to be tuned in. Hey, cat, cat's back! Yay! All right, so let's see how far we get through this. Um, at least I got the recording too, uh, and I can splice this together with the previous recording as well. Uh, maybe with some of the crashing as an outtake. Okay, so I'm going to start to uh, walk through this. So here we've got um, the Kanji Kente training app, Kanken Training. Um, this is one of several editions. So I think there's also like an edition two out as well, uh, which is supposed to contain like a, ref a new question bank. Um, so different questions. Funnily enough, my 3DS crashed too on India. <laughs> <laughs> it's it seems finicky. I mean, it was like four to five times that I tried it in the previous broadcast, um, and then it didn't work at all. And of course, you know, when no one's looking, it works fine. Um, so let's walk through this. Um, this could be a different level of embarrassment. Very finicky. Yeah, I mean, you're you're hacking 
I mean, hacking the system at the boot level with the firmware, it's stuff is going to go awry. Okay, so this is um, data syntaxe um, day kudasai input um, your data. So you can create, you can have several profiles here, up to five. I've got one for myself at the top. Um, the second one, Aya, that's my wife. Um, I just created one for her for her to run uh, a couple of tests as well. And she wanted to give it a try. Um, so I'm going to select my entry and double click it to get into my account. So the first thing we're going to see, um, it's going to show me my kanji ryoku. It's going to show me what is my current level. And this is based on, um, there's tests uh, that you can do. It's one of the most valuable things about this is it has mock tests. Um, I'm practicing, yes, I'm practicing for um, pre-2, going for pre-2 uh, in 15 days on uh, February 16th. And hopefully after pre-2, if I can pass it this time, uh, then I'm going to um, work on 2. Uh, so, so what we see here as well is kind of progress level. So as you go through answering questions, it is recording like how many of like the questions that it has for you and how many of the kanji it has for you, you've actually looked at and practiced up until this point. And so you can see four, I got a lot of progress. Three, I got halfway through because I shifted over to using Anki for a while. Uh, and Jun Niku, I got back into recently when Anki became um, too burdensome and burdensome and the, uh, the reviews were just like kind of eating my lunch. And I wanted to get back to something that where the questions had more of the form of the test, um, which is one of the really cool things about this is that um, the questions are more or less of the form that you're going to see on the test, uh, though with a little bit of difference. You can see I've done a little bit of practice on uh, two on uh, Niku as well. Uh, that's because if I finish up a session for today on June Niku, I jump, in, jump into doing Niku. And one of the benefits of that is that Niku, uh, the practices don't just include um, the kanji that you're trying to study for at this level, but there's review of the previous level as well. So a lot of what I've already, what I've started studying on Niku is actually really good review for the June Niku as well and kind of more challenging aspects of the june eq so i'm just doing a little bit of that on the side uh, so i can press the gate to get to the next screen this is being remarkably stable on sticker stream so far on uh, my ds so far um hopefully i'm not going to curse it by saying that um so there's ugh. hold on i didn't mean to go there i'm going to go back to this menu um so this menu uh you're going to see a couple of things up at the top. You're going to see a calendar and what the calendar. Hi, Mercedes. Welcome. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm just in kind of the middle of the walkthrough now. Got into the main screen of Konken and showing people what the different sections of the Kanji Kente uh, training app are. Uh, so the top is going to show you uh, a calendar and the calendar is going to show you uh, what if you've like passed an exam on a given day, um, there would be like a little gokaku uh, up here that shows that you pass the test. The tests are uh, under this um, Kanken Challenge section. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do the training instead if I just want to show this. Um, so you've got two options, Shinki, take a new test, uh, Zenkai no uh, Fukushu, uh, practice a previous test. The nice thing about uh, the test, uh, first you can select the level that you want to do uh, and once you select that level, you've got two options. Um, you can do Honkaku Kente, you can do the 60 minute full test, uh, or you can do the uh, Otegaru Kente, the 15 minute short test. Um, this 15 minute short test is a really good way to get some quick um, practice in under a stressful time test condition. Um, I kind of wish they had software like this for the JLPT. If they do, I've, I haven't heard about it. I would love it. Um, I think that'd be really helpful for JLPT learners as well. Because that's one of the most challenging things about the JLPT uh, is actually getting uh, everything done in the appropriate amount of time. Um, so there's other sections here. Um, uh, so the Bunyabetsu is where you do most of your um, practice. It's your training section. Um, so I'm going to dive mostly uh, into that. I just also wanted um, to point out too that um, you've got other sections here. My Kanken, you can save problems uh, that you find particularly challenging. Uh, and then you can later go back into my Konken and you can practice them individually, which I find really helpful. Um, yeah. Sometimes I mean to scroll and it interprets it as a tap and it's really frustrating. 
Um, there's also um, the Seisuke Yitsudan. So you can go back and you can see um, that table that we saw earlier that's showing um, your results. <sighs> there's thing again where I thought I was uh, scrolling and instead it tapped. Um, but I'm going to go into the training section um, for right now. Uh, and Mercedes also, I don't know if you saw the earlier uh, broadcast. I kind of stopped halfway through because I had crashing issues with the 3DS. I did do a presentation on the ComCan earlier, and I'm going to slice that in, together into a video and put on our Patreon site as well so you can see uh, later if you didn't get a chance to catch that. And I agree with both um, you and Kat. I think that would be a great thing for the Switch as well. All right, so I'm going to go into the training section. So here you've got two um, options. Um, you've got your Shinki and your Fukushu. So Shinki is basically, it's me, new, but it basically means a new session. Um, so you, when you start a new session, uh, you can practice problems in a given category of problems. And then after you're done with that, if you missed any, you can go back in the Fukushu section and you can repractice the problems, just the problems that you missed will be waiting there for you. Uh, so. I, it's really kind of nice dual system for practicing. I'm going to go to Shinki to do new session. And do Niku. Okay, and so here we see the different sections that we have, and I'm just going to go through and play them through one by one. Uh, earlier today, I had very few misses, uh, but it, it all really depends on like what problems I get. Um, even though I said like this is a new session, there's there's a some sort of system it's using in the background those of you familiar who use like anki or memorize or any sort of srs flashcard system know that that the uh, srs algorithm is fairly well known and it's fairly predictable and kind of easy to control um, particularly in anki there's a lot of ways to control uh, how and when cards are going to appear how quickly they graduate when you're going to see them again um but uh, on this app, uh, it's a lot more. It's a lot more mysterious how that side of it actually works and what logic it's using to decide to show you new cards um, versus showing you old cards. Um, so a little less visibility into that. Wanikani, yeah, I've heard Wanikani isn't as flexible uh, as uh, Anki uh, either. I also hear people who like really like it though. Do you like it? I never actually. I think I used it like really early on. Well, not too early on. I actually used it after I'd learned like a, a wallop of kanji, and it just was a little bit frustrating for me, so I ended up not using it. Okay, so I'm going to do Yomi first, and Yomi is just reading. So uh, anybody who's you know like done some kanji study, uh, you know this is probably like the easiest portion. And by the way, you can't hear it here because I didn't hook up the sound, um, but there's this really nice music playing too. I kind of go around humming and singing this during the day because I practice this so much. My cat says, I prefer it a lot. Recommend for beginners. Uh, Wani Kani takes a load uh, uh, for you by having everything set up. Yeah, that's really cool. I, I, Anki is like really do it yourself uh, a lot of times. So unless you're in the mood of going around like looking for material and figuring out what you want to use, um, you know, it, it can be a bit of a pain to kind of get started. Okay, so for this section, um, they're simply going to ask you, they're going to give you kanji in red. Uh, isn't it, though? Very charming music. They're going to give you kanji in red, and you need to write in hiragana uh, what uh, the kanji pronunciation is. So first sentence is going to be, um, Rosha na aida no mizo ga ano fukamaru. So let's type that in. I think it's mizo, right? Yes, and so you uh, you type in everything that you want to type or write in everything you want to write in. It appears on the left hand side. Um, when you're ready, um, you uh, press the button down here to say OK, and you get judged on whether you get it right or not. So next question. I'm just going to go through these. Initsu um, So this is going to be initsu. Thing you have to um, watch for sometimes is. Um, Sometimes it doesn't actually interpret what you wrote as what you meant to write. It does. It is pretty accurate. Um, so there's some, uh, particularly when we get into kanji later, we might get into some kanji um, that's really hard for me to get the system to recognize. Um, gen kibishi, uh, I can almost never get this thing to recognize it when I write it, and I don't think it's because I've got the stroke order down incorrectly. It's, I don't know what's going on, but hopefully I figure it out someday. 
Um, you can see there's 30 questions on this one too, and so it's a pretty extensive practice session. Um, so it's migai, migaku. And kete, and then pass that. So, hapio kaite, ano, uh, mokin, or ano, enso shita. It's going to be mokin. So, wooden koto, basically. Mokin. Uh, so, honpo no ikikata o shita sakka datta. So, honpo, right? Well, let's find out. This is being very gentle with me on the pronunciation, at least so far. It's all stuff I know pretty well. Kete. Tane ni watari gyokai o gyujitteru. I sometimes have problem uh, getting it to uh, recognize um, the diminutive characters, like the ya, yu, yo. Um, you got to get them placed like right um, in that kind of upper right hand corner of the screen for it. Otherwise, it sometimes will do it as um, the larger version of the character. Uh, Kaigo wa, oh, this is one I always get wrong. Nagoyaka? Let's see if I've actually learned it. Okay. Hi. Hey, I actually learned something this week. Um, yeah, I really do like the input system. Um, it's helping a lot with my kana, really, um, which when I first started writing again in Japanese, I hadn't been writing for a while. Um, and I've, I really like couldn't even like write the kana, even though I could recognize them. Um, if you don't practice it, you can't do it. Um, so this has helped me a lot with that and with, of course, my kanji writing. All right. Uh, Arasoi no chusai o katte, katte deru. Chusai desu ne. So moimasu no. Uh, see, I thought I put down chu, but it got it as su. So that does happen. <laughs> Did it again. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Ra, jodan de shou. Got it. Mercedes, it's definitely making me want to charge up my Japanese 3S and pop in the secondhand store for a copy of this. I, I like it. I really do. I think it's really good practice. And I think if you, I would think that if you're at like, you know, JLPT and three level and can kind of force your way, even maybe even lower, you can just kind of force your way through the menu descriptions and figure out, you know, what it's wanting you to do. Um, you, after you learn it like once, you just kind of like doing it automatically. You're not even reading anything except the questions that come up uh, on the screen. Uh, so I, I think it's really valuable for um, enforcing your Japanese practice at pretty near every level. And Kat says the two versions, I think they're just different questions. Um, so it's a different question bank so that if you've gotten tired of like the one, you can um, uh, strap up the other. And there might be some other improvements, but it's largely a different question bank. Futari no harai wa. So harai. This is gonna this is gonna take a little longer than I thought actually. So I think I'm gonna just bail out of this session right now. I'm gonna say studio for right now, and I'll get back to that later in the day. Uh, you get the idea that with the Yomi section. Let me show you the other sections. They're a little shorter. Uh, most of them are, uh, with the exception of uh, one of the kanji sections. There's two different kanji writing sections in here. One's ten questions, and another's twenty five. Um, so a little gap there. Um, the 10 question one goes fast. But let's show some actual kanji writing and some of the other stuff that comes with this. Back to Jini Q level. Um, the next entry is Bushu, so radicals. So can you uh, correctly identify the radical? So um, once again, so the kanji no e Bushu o erabe. Select the, uh, the radical for the kanji. And so for this one, it's Akebi. Oh, no, I got it wrong. It's, it's Kuruma, Kuruma hen. Screw that up. I think it's Kabanehen. Yep. And Anakamuri for this one. Yep. Oh, I think this is just keen. I think this is just a radical. Yep. Now the whole kanji is radical. Um, here it's um Shitamizu, right? Yes. Oh, I don't actually know. Yeah? 
or Yumi Hen? Yumi? Yeah, Yumi. And this one's got to be Chikata, right? And just a couple more questions. This um, this is going to be Toragashira, right? Yep. And ooh, is this Kuchi? No, it's not. It is Ni. Really? Huh, that's interesting. For Ah. Really interesting. Oh, and this one. Ooh, it's going to be MI. Yes, it is. Okay, um, so that's just selecting the right bushu. Um, that usually, once you start to get some bushu down, you get uh, you get it down a little bit. Yeah, it says Wanikani has such weird names for radicals, so I have no idea the actual Japanese names for radicals. Um, honestly, that's been my problem with some other systems like HiSig, is that it's just it's made up stuff that is actually not used in like Japanese education, and I have a real problem with that. I I, I would much rather um, stick to learning stuff like the radicals that is actually like commonly accepted and is going to be of wider use just outside of somebody's system. But also whatever gets you like past the, the kanji wall, right? So you're not criticizing anyone's choice there, just saying. Um, so the next one is Jukugo no Kosei. This is one of my favorite um, things about Konken. Um, so um, two character compounds, Niji Jukugo in Japanese, they have a set of, uh, they all have a certain construction. Um, the characters, the two characters relate to one another in some fashion, and they relate to one another in a couple of set patterns. So the, the Konken is using five here. Um, the set patterns are the two characters can complement, they can reinforce their meanings, they can be synonyms. The two characters can be antonyms. Um, one character can describe the other. One character can show action on another character, and a character uh, can be denying or negating the other character. Understanding this, this is one of the things when I was talking earlier about kanji literacy that I think really helps with Japanese literacy in general, is you start to study those constructions and the way that uh, two character compounds and words work starts to make a lot more sense. And that combined uh, with knowing the meanings of the kanji uh, contributes a lot to what I said earlier about being able to improve your listening through kanji study. It seems paradoxical, but it actually happens. Okay, so here we're going to use um, the word bishu. The word bishu is um, it's a taigi construction, which means the characters are um, are, are contradict, contradicting one another. They have the exact uh, opposite meaning. Be you're beautiful, it's kushi, and shu or minikui, loathsome, hateful, and that's correct. Kei is also a, a taigi pattern. Um, the the latitude and longitude, the two characters, tate, um, jun tate, the characters are contradicting one another. I don't know what I just said there. Um, so teizo, so teizo, te is an interesting character I've learned just from studying, um, uh, just from studying. Uh, the kan, uh, kanji kente. Uh, so te, this is, uh, it means like slight or just a little. So this is a slight increase. Um, so this is going to be a shishoku pattern. Nikan, uh, mi, of course, negation. So that's a dasho pattern. Uh, higyo. So I think that is going to be a mokuteki pattern. Yes. Um, funin. I think that is also mokuteki. Right? Yes. Um, so that's a verb uh, verb action pattern at work there. And sekka. Oh, I forget this one. I think I think I'm going to bomb this one. Sekka is going to be um, it's going to be shishoku. I was right. And um, mogi. I think that's going to, I think that's going to be, yeah, that's a synonym pattern. I'm checking out in the chat here real quick. See, the real advantage of Wani Kani would be how fast it gets you to recognize and reading kanji and kanji-based vocab. Um, almost 400 kanji, over 800 vocab already. And that's, that's pretty impressive. You know, anything that gets you uh, to reading Japanese faster, you know, the better. And you can always fill in the gaps later. I've heard a lot of people find a lot of benefit in the Wani Kani system as well. Uh, sonpo. No, Junpo. Junpo. Not Son. Jun. Junpo. 
I think that's going to be the Mukteki following the law. Yep. Toshu, no, Hoshu, Yoshu. I forget the pronunciation of that. Um, but that's going to be a Shushoku. No, Mukteki. That's nah, a, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a Ryugi. It's a synonym pattern. All right, so not bad on that. A couple things that are really neat. One thing I really need to reinforce, so 9 out of 10, not bad on that one. Uh, so we're going to go back into the next study area, and that is going to be, I'm really glad this hasn't crashed yet. It just has to make it a little bit further. Okay, so Yoji Jukugo. So now we're on to four character compounds, and there's two different practices for this. Uh, there are two different forms of questions on this one. And then Shukaishi. Okay, yosh, ikuzo. All right, so this one, ato no koho no nakumi hiragana o ano kanji ni kanji ni ano shiteire yoji juku go o kansei seyo. So you, they're going to keep out a, one kanji from a four character compound, and you, you've got to write it down. And you can see up here on the, um, let's see if I can do my mouse cursor here. Uh, you can see over here on uh, the upper screen on the left hand side they've given you the different pronunciations that could be used um, for the characters that are going to go in there for uh, all the problems um, so you can look to those and use that as an aid to help you um, fill in uh, so non nani furaku um this is oh am i gonna get this i think it's nanko furaku and the ko is I think it's furu, right? This is the first time we've done kanji recognition. The kanji recognition, I think, is really good. Again, outside of a few quirks. Oh, nanko. Uh, yeah, I got that one, Ron. That's uh, one for me to study. Oh, so here comes um, Kienban Joel. Is Joel a candidate? It is, and I think that's this Joel. And I got that one right. All right. Zen, zento yubo daione. Zento meaning future. Synonymous with shodai. Yep. Nanshi uh, moko. That's going to be koshi. No, that doesn't make sense. It's already being. Soshi moko. Is that right? Nope, that's wrong. Oh, Chinshimoko, that's right. I got the construction of that one, Ron. Just picked up on that. Good on the developers, right? Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's good kanji recognition. Um, I've used some other apps with kanji recognition, um, like Midori on the iPhone, that are decent, um, but not perfect. Um, this is a lot better, I think. This is pretty good. Tanzenji, uh, oh, this is one I might not. Tanzen Jizoku. And then what Zoku would that be? Oh, I think I'm blanking on this. Tanzen Jizoku would be. Do, 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 do. It wouldn't be this Zoku, would it? Ashi? It would not. Ta it's not even close. Um, Jijaku. Uh, Tanzen Jijaku. So that's one I'm going to have to study. All right. Um, Nambu gekire, uh, kombu, uh, ko, kobu gekire, I think. Oh, I can't. So one of the things, um, one of the things that is a little bit, I want to say it's frustrating, but it's just something that you have to keep in mind is that uh, the kanji input is on a delay system. So you write, and then when you stop writing, it says, I'm going to interpret that as a kanji. So if you're in the middle and you're like, oh, what was that part below that? It, it's gone. Um, so sometimes you got to like kind of sit back, get it in your brain what that kanji is um, that's supposed to go there, and just be able to um, pump it out in a good, like, swift motion, which is a little bit frustrating, but it also helps you kind of get the kanji down in like one sweeping fluid motion, which I kind of like too. Let's see if I got Kobugekide right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is um, Tohose. I think this is a new one for me, actually. Tohose. I'm going to guess this is Tohose So with Hashiru. 
Oh, I was right. Yes. I'm learning a few things. Uh, oh, hyakuyako, right? Hyakuyako. And the key is oni, I think. Oh, see, so that one it got wrong, um, which I don't think is a fault of the app. It's probably a fault of my crappy Japanese input. But let me try it again. Now it got it. I can do that. Nice. Okay, and then Kojo Ryo Zoku. Okay, this is where Zoku comes in. That's that right? Now it's going to be this. Fuzoku no Zoku. Right? Yep. And one more to go on this section. Um, Fuwa, I think it's the Daido. Kaminari. Fuwa Daido. And we got that. Okay. Not so bad. I think three run on that one. Yeah, three run on that one. And it's not bad for Yoji Juku Go. That's one of the hardest things when I first started doing this because my Yoji Juku Go knowledge was like very, um, very poor. That's one thing I've really built up from repeat practice. Okay, I'll go through a couple of other of these. So Yoji Juku Go 2. Um, so the 2 is going to be so this is a little different they're going to give you uh they're going to give you a definition and then you just have to scroll past and find which yoji jukugo corresponds to the definition that they're giving you and this is quick this is five characters um so uh, so that is going to be and uh, do and you see there's a Number of choices that I have, not bull guy Mujin, not quite sure. Ah, uh, no, Chukudio Danko. It's the first one. No, I was wrong. <laughs> it is actually um, Ryodo Dabi. Is that right? Am I getting that pronunciation right? Um, that's one going to be one I'm going to have to study. Oh, you can see I already have it on my content, so I already screwed it up. If you're doing the Konken training now, and if you fail at a particular kanji, you get a sheet full of info in that kanji, says Kat. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, um, I think when you fail a kanji, you're able to like get some more details on it, including stroke order, own uh, kun readings, and other information. Um, so that's really cool. Kiwadoi tokoro de tasukaru koto. Might be Fune Dorioka. I'm pretty sure that's some um, Fune Dorioka. Dorioka. Let's go back up there and place our bets. Yeah, I was wrong. Ah, Kiki Patsu, right. I'm half concentrating these as I go through. Hijo ni komattari, ano, kurishindari, suru jo tai. Uh, yeah, oh, I am bombing the section today. It happens. Seisoku uh, Iki. Toshoku, I think. Uh, toshoku, right? Yeah. Yokoku ga ita sui ni ano omoi kitte jishi suru koto. This is Jukuryo Danko. Yes, thank you. Konika mawazu, ano... Mm, so take unilateral action. Memoku Yakucho? Yogai Kenko? This is probably one I'm not really going to know either. Bochaku Mujin. Possibly. Bochaku Mujin de Sho? Yes, Bochaku Mujin. All right. And so that's that section. A little bit easier uh, than the other. Other one in which you're inputting kanji because you just got, you have to get the definition right. A couple more sections to go through here, and then I'll wrap it up for the night. I can smell dinner, and it smells really good. Boy, she's soul. So next one is um, uh, taiki go or duigi go. Um, so this is challenging. This is one of the more challenging sections. Uh, what's for dinner? Uh, spaghetti with meat sauce. Really good smelling meat sauce, too. 
uh, Taigigo. So here you're going to get, um, this is split into groups of two problems. Uh, one is um, Taigigo. So that's going to be antonyms. So you're going to get a word, uh, and then you're going to be asked, what is the antonym of the word? And you have to write it in kanji. Pasta is the best. It is so good. Uh, on the left-hand side, again, uh, as uh, we had for the previous uh previous section. Um, there's words written out already in uh, hiragana. And by the way, I'm using um, I'm using the D-pad to control the sliding back and forth on the DS. Uh, and so you can use those to help kind of like shake your memory about what you want to uh, put in here. Um, so tolki, you know, something getting really expensive. Um, the opposite of that is geraku. And I think that's shita, noke, followed by our friend otosu, furaku. Am I right? I am right. Nice. Uh, Coleman, haughty, arrogant. What's the opposite of that? Not zanen, not binsoku, not bokan, not masho, not meyo, not meyo. Kinin, definitely not. Zanen, suyoku, no, binsoku. I don't I really don't think it's masho. I don't really know the kanji for it, though. Ah, oh, it is binsoku. Really? Oh, it's not koman. I screwed up. It's kanman. Uh, that, that was stupid. Yeah, lethargy. I misread it completely, thinking it was koman instead of kanman. Um, so that was my bad there. All right. So, uh, chijoku. Okay, so this is what I was thinking the other, <laughs> the other word was. Kinin, Geraku, Bokan, Masho. Might be. Chichoku. Might be Mayo. I think it's Mayo. Let's see if I'm right. I know Mayo pretty well. I was right. Okay, Taigigo. So we're the last two of the Taigigo problems. Um, Zanji. Um, temporary, momentary. Um, Not masho. Mm, suyoku? No, not suyoku. Kinin? No. I'm at a loss, actually. A kokyu. Ah, uh, yeah, kokyu. The kanji for that didn't pop into my head, so I didn't. wasn't able to recall it. wasn't able to place it from the hiragana. Okay, so we're still on the taigigo, the last one. Uh, empo. Um, kinin. <laughs> And then one of my favorite kanji to write, being tonari. I just, I don't know. It's cool. I'm getting it wrong, though. Kinin and boom. Yep, that's good. Okay, so now we're on to the ryugi go. So this is going to be synonyms. Um, that really, I feel this is the toughest section. I disagree with you. I think the next section is the toughest section. <laughs> I'll show that to you in a minute. Um, this is a little tough, though. Reasoning from kanji than kanji from hiragana. Again, I think it's one of those things that comes with practice. Um, once you get to, to some more practice, you get it down. And one of the things that uh, the kanken does really drill you on uh, is, uh, hom is homonyms. homonyms. I can't even say it now. Homonyms. Um, it drills you really hard on that, so your ability to do that gets a lot better. Uh, ikan. That's zanen right there. Am I going to get zanen right here? Nokoro moi. Zan. Oh, that was not Nen, my pal, my friend. Got it. Arugigo. Ozashi. I don't think I've done this one before. And I, I know the meaning of that just by looking at the kanji. And that would be. Ah, Bokan, right? Let's see if I can get Bokan written right. And the con is going to be this guy, right? Bull con. Looking from the side. Yep, got it. Um, sakujo. Oh, that should be easy. It's a synonym of sakujo. Masho. Oh, can, do I remember how to do show? Oh, show is easy, right? Uh, okay, this is another one that I have trouble getting it to take. 
and I might be doing the top run. No, yeah, I did a little run. It's supposed to do it that downstroke first and then the diagonal strokes on the side, but I got it to take. And I'm totally wrong. Oh, Ron Ma. Ron Matsu. Yeah, that's it's not even the right pronunciation for that character, so I got that wrong. Um, Kaiko, uh, that's going to be Suyoku. Oh, am I getting that right? Is that Nimben as the bush on that one, or is that it's not? It's the Shinben. I've been making that mistake for some reason. <laughs> I'm thinking that Ninben goes over there. Here you go, Shodai. Uh, another easy one, Zento. I say that, but Zento wasn't really a word that I knew before I started drilling uh, Junikyu. It's a, a pretty prominent Junikyu word. And that's that. Uh, so that is uh, the Taigigo and Nugigo section. And that is difficult. It does get better with practice. This next section, however, I think is uh, the absolute hardest. Thank you, 3DS, for not crashing. Otsukari sama desu. Okay, so now we're going to go. Oh, no, it's not my most hated section yet. Um, so next is just a, don't jinx it. I know, right? I should not say that. Um, Kakitori Ichi. So I'm just going to show, I'll just show a few from these, and I'm going to bounce out of it to show the next section because um, I want to get through these sections in short order. Um, so this one. Uh, this Kakitori, this is just it's going to give you a sentence, and um, one of the one of the characters or two of the characters is going to be left out and spelled uh, with katakana, and you need to write the kanji, uh, kind of the heart of kanji kente, I think. Um, Shino shimpu uh, o ano hakusho de makaeru. Uh, shimpu is going to be. Uh, am I going to get it right? Woman holding a broom. Yes, yeah, terrible character. Terrible, terrible character. <laughs> I think that's going to be this food. Yes. And uh, Seto, I know that one. Uh, is it that right? Oh, no, 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 no. Damn it. Uh, yeah. Um, an extra stroke in there made it the wrong character. I've been doing that a lot lately. Got to drill that. What else is someone is supposed to hold them? I write a brush. <laughs> what they do with it, right? That's dangerous. That's dangerous talk there. And Mercedes, I'm glad this is interesting. I hope some other people find it interesting after I um, post it online too. Again, I'm kind of like becoming a Konken enthusiast um, here. So I think I'm doing this one wrong. I think that goes up and that goes bottom, right? Yep, got that right. Okay, I'm going to bust out of this. I think you get the idea. You're writing kanji. I um, mean, in putting them. And there's another section that's like that at the end too, but with a lot more questions that go, the other section goes up to 25 questions. So if you do this, I tend to like to do this, do like each of these sections once a day, and then do uh, some of the, um, do the fukushu, do the practice of the ones I missed. And uh, you get a lot of kanji writing in, in a day doing this. So I like that. I also have been trying to keep a journal uh, in Japanese. I kept one for a while. I haven't been doing it a lot lately. I need to get back to doing it. All right, so this is Goji Teisei. Um, Kat, you said the other section. Uh, you thought uh, anonyms and synonyms was the hardest. I hate this section. Um, this is my uh, absolute nemesis. What this section is, is you're just going to be given basically a wall of text. And in that wall of text, one of the characters is wrong, one of them. One of the kanji, and your job is to identify which kanji is wrong and correct it and put in the right uh, kanji. All right, so, uh, so sometimes I'll read through the entire thing and I have to read through the entire thing to be able to understand which kanji is wrong. Other times I'll just get to a point and I'll be like, oh, this kanji is um, definitely wrong. And in this case, I recognize the kanji that's wrong pretty immediately. Um, the shin nobiru is not the correct shin to be used here. Um, the kanji that's wrong is going to have the same pronunciation as the correct one, um, but it's going to be a different kanji. So kind of like homophone discrimination practice here at the kanji level. Oh, I love the love going in on the chat. And, and guys, you got, glad you guys are getting to know, know each other. I think that's one of the funnest things about doing events like this is, you know, people get to just like kind of chat and talk and get to know each other, which is awesome. Hey, I actually got that one. 
So it's not a bogus kanji, but just the incorrect kanji. Correct. It, it, it's an actual kanji with that same pronunciation, but uh, it does not belong there. It's not the correct kanji to use in that word. Um, so you need to be able to pull the correct one out of your butt and put it on the string. Chigaku no judo no jukyo de wa. I want to see if I can get to a hard one. Chiko no hase o sore gokai. Gokai no waza o sakiru keiko ni aru. I feel like that's wrong. I feel like that go kai. Yeah, that go is wrong. That go means um, like tough. And that's not the correct kanji here. The correct kanji is, I think. Did I get it right? I did. Yay. Hyakure no no saigetsu o hita koko no kousha ga ano ryokyu ka no tame e Hokai? Hotai Sariru koto ni natta. Is that ho? I'm not pronouncing that right, am I? No, that's um, Ketsuki Kai. Kai. Kai Tai. So let me try that again. Um, Hyakune no Saigetsu Hita no Koko no Koshaga. That's all right. Um, Ryokyu ka? That's right. No Tame. I think this is wrong. Kai Tai. That Kai, that Kai means destruction, and they're talking about renovation i got it wrong uh but yeah um i i knew the kanji was wrong but i didn't uh, know which kanji should go there oh, i don't think i have any idea I think it's this early character, this Koto, I think. No, no, that's right, that's right. Tanaki no Shugeki. Is it that Geki? Might be the Geki. I think the Kyuchiyo Dashita is right, so I think it's that. I think it might be that. Or, it's, or is it the Shu? I'm not remembering, I'm just gonna pass. It's the Shu, uh, yeah. No, it's the Geki. It's the Geki. It's the other Geki I was thinking of. No, it's Shu, right? Uh, I'll review it later. Kozuri no Hogai o Kita no Asia no Toshi ga, ano, Chisi Koji no Shien. That N is totally wrong and mistaken. It's this N, right? Oh, I screwed that up. And did I? No, I got it. All right, so that's done. I got like two or three of those wrong. I think it was a hard one. I got two of them wrong. That's a really hard section. Again, it's my most hated. There's only two sections left, so let me show these um, real quick. Yep, so the next section is Okurigana, and I'll just do like two problems here to show it off. And I can wrap this up quick. Um, so, um, Okurigana, now you're not just writing the kanji, um, but they're going to put um, part of the kanji suffix, the Okurigana, um, in, uh, to katakana as well. Um, so, you've got to get uh, that. You've basically got to be able to show you know where the kanji ends and the kana begins um, for a given character and word. Um, so, Nibudu is going to be... So you know, you, this is a little hard too because you got to get not just oh you actually you know what nibu is nibu e so it's going to be just the suit in there yeah yeah don't anyone sell themselves short for where they are in Japanese learning I've been at this for eight years now and I feel like I'm still learning something new every day and I have a lot of a lot of ways to go especially in terms of my listening uh, so. You know, keep on chugging. You know, whatever you're doing, it's really just about consistency and time. Uh, the more you try and the more you work at it and the more consistently um, you study, uh, then uh, the more progress you'll make. Um, this is just the result of like several years of refusing to give up, basically. Uh, I'll do one more. Um, I always get hitasu wrong. But I think it's just the su. 
and I'm right on that. Okay. Um, so you get the idea from that. I've seen, seen Japan is one of the best things I've found in recent years. Oh, thank you. I'm blushing. Thank you so much for the compliment. I feel like I'm not a lovely at work and approach um, people who are actually proficient. Yeah, I, I had, it took me years to not like be completely paralyzed, nervous. I'm talking to native Japanese speakers as well. Um, that's something that I was just a lot of practice. I wouldn't say it got me over it. It's made the nervousness um, less present, um, less of a, less of a factor, um, but there's still some nervousness to some degree, and I don't think any of that will ever go away. Um, all of it will ever go away, um, but it does help just kind of putting it out, out there and practicing. Okay, so the final section is Kakitori uh, 2, so another writing section, a um, little bit uh, more difficult, um, more questions. Okay, so um, Danjo de Shoujo to ano, eh, Kinen Pin ga okurareta. Uh, there's like two possible kuraretas that could be here, and I'm thinking this one is. Am um, I remembering the bushu for this correctly? I don't know if I am. And I might be. I'm trying to remember like the completely wrong character here. It's not Ishin Ben, is it? Okurareta. I don't think it's this. I think I might be getting it wrong. Sometimes I feel like I'm inputting a kanji and it doesn't feel right. Uh, that's not right. Yeah, it's Kaihen. Kaihen. I keep forgetting Kaihen and that, that Okuru. Um, nani ga fukumu tokoro ga aru dashi. Fukumu, I think this is this Fukumu. And got that one right. And I'll do one more. Ichinenkan no uriyake o ano ryuke suru. Ah, ryuke. This is a tough one. Um, I think I remember this. Ryuke suru. And boom. Yes, and got that one. Um, so that's just continuing to go uh, on with that, with asking you to uh, do more kanji writing. Um, you get a lot of um, really uh, good practice from that. And just to uh, wrap up on the comments here, I'll bomb out of this. Um, oh, thank you for the Black in Japan uh, article compliment, uh, Mercedes. That was that was a really challenging for one for me as a white person. You know, I. I wanted to get it right. And so I tried to default as much as possible just to um, asking uh, people who were black in Japan, what are your experience and trying to convey that experience as much as possible. Um, that's kind of like the whole raison data of the site is trying to um, surface opinions, views, uh, and things that are happening in Japan from a Japan perspective um, that you might not uh, otherwise hear and trying to get it um, from people who live in Japan uh, as much as possible from Japanese people as much as possible rather than just like kind of putting words in their mouths. And the weird, stereotype, weird Japan stereotype is definitely awful and something that um, we try to really fight against on the site as well. especially for me, it's been important to hear more about LGBT issues in Japan. Uh, yeah, um, and I think on uh, Writer of Scratch on Twitter does like a really good job. I know that we do some coverage as well. Um, Writer of Scratch really kind of has a monopoly on that, though, from a Twitter perspective. What I've really liked about what Writer of Scratch has been doing on Twitter has been like all the positive developments that happen at the Gigi Tai level, at the local state and government level, um, and at the prefecture level. There's a lot that's actually happening that's positive for LGBT, LGBT people in Japan and disabled people in Japan uh, and for women in Japan, but it's not necessarily happening at the government level controlled by Abe. It's happening at that more local level. And Writer Scratch surfaces a lot of really positive stuff for the LG, LGBT community. And I've seen that. My voice is shot, and I'm going to <laughs> go get some dinner. Um, thank you guys for hanging out here. Uh, I am going to, I uh, hope this was valuable. I'm going to edit these two uh, video casts together and put them up on the Patreon as a public post so that other people can hopefully get some value from it as well. I will indeed have lots of pasta. Thank you, and thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.